Geekazine and Geeksmack is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network over at techpodcast.com. If it's tech, then it's here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to another beautiful edition of the Geek Smack episode number 194. And this week we're going to be talking about a lot of great stuff, including Ustream, including goodbye to the DVD. But the more important thing is if you've got a MacBook Pro, you've got to watch out because there's a security vulnerability. And we'll be talking about that on this episode of Geek Smack. Of course, Geek Smack is brought to you by Citrix and go to Assist Express. Go over to go to assist.com forward slash podcast for a 30 day free trial. And a new sponsor, Carbonite.com. Get yourself a 15 day trial. And of course, if you buy one year, you can get two months free by using that code, that offer code TPN. Let's get into your Geek Smack for this week. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to episode number 194 of Geek Smack, where we smack the geek out like uh, somebody would smack out cardboard cameras, which we'll talk about a little bit later. We've got a lot of great stuff. We've got a lot of great stuff on the tech news side. We've got a lot of great stuff on the geeks news side. Of course, if this is the first time that you've come to the show, thank you very much for coming to Geek Smack. We do this every single Tuesday, so check it out and, of course, get it onto your favorite player. We're over on the Tech Podcast Network. We're over on Blueberry. You can get the audio ver- version over on Stitcher.com. If you go down to Stitcher.com forward slash geek, you could win yourself $100, which is pretty darn sweet. And you can get it in many different other areas, including your Roku, including your Boxy. The new Roku is coming out. I'm really excited about it. I got mine ordered mine last night, so I should see it in the next week or so. So I can't wait for that to happen because it's now got Angry Birds. Not as much about the Angry Birds as it is about the motion remote that's going to be coming with it. Wondering how Roku 2, as it's now going to be called, is going to turn into a gaming system as much as a movie system. So that's going to be pretty interesting. And of course, we've got a lot of great news. So let's get into your tech news for this week. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to start over at USA Today. And over on USA Today, they are talking about Walmart. Now, as you know, last week, Netflix has decided to change up their pricing scheme, and they they changed it up big time. And Blockbuster is really not doing anything about it. They did some thing where it's like you can do two dollars more than what you've done before and it was just kind of really lame so I just kind of pushed that aside but Walmart is of course they've been talking about getting into the live streaming game they uh, they launched their service the other day which was pretty cool and I was very very interested about it it's a streaming service it's not like Netflix so you can't do you can't get multiple movies you have to stream per movie and that's price per movie but it's a good alternate to something, let's say, like Amazon.com, let's say, like a red box or something like that. Now, the interesting thing is, there's red boxes in Walmarts everywhere. Does that mean that red box is getting pulled from Walmarts? Will Walmart decide, hey, maybe we should start a video kiosk system? I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that they're going to go for that? Let me know. My Twitter handle is Geekazine. You can see it down there or geekazine at gmail.com if you want to email and and talk to me. Of course, I do have the phone number at 608-205-4378, and that's always on. You can go over to usatoday.com for that news article. 
All right, moving from uh, Walmart to Radio Shack. Radio Shack has decided, you know, I we think that T-Mobile's not doing their job, and they kind of breached their contract. So we're going to just completely forget about T-Mobile, and we're moving over to Verizon. So apparently, they said that uh, they've they've decided to, uh, they're going to the, the well, basically T-Mobile, which is part of Dutch. Douche Telecom, Douche Telecom, I believe that's how you pronounce it, and uh, they have materially breached their contract. The retailer also said that T-Mobile's product offerings were not competitive to other carriers. And of course, they're probably thinking, well, T-Mobile's now going to be AT&T. We don't want to deal with AT&T, I think. I don't know. Well, I, I don't know what their thinking is, but they say that T-Mobile's breached the contract. They want to wipe it out, and they want to get somebody in there that's actually going to do something. I thought they also had Sprint into their stores, but now they want to get, they got a new contract with Verizon Wireless and uh, Vodafone Group Pick. So you can get, uh, you can get Verizon starting September 15th in 4,300 radio checks. My question to you is this, do you actually get your phones through a radio shack? I personally would never get a phone through radio shack. That's just me. But you might you might love Radio Shacks, or weren't they called The Shack for a while? Or I don't know. It's it's too confusing. I think Radio Shack is confusing enough as it is. And if there's any breach of contract, maybe T-Mobile should come back and say, you know, Radio Shack, you really haven't been doing your job either, because this is a 50-50 partnership. I mean, when I put my product into your shop, I expect to actually get it sold as well. There's promotion on both ends, and do you see that promotion? I don't know. I think it's just the fact that they're upset with the fact that T-Mobile's going to AT&T and they're going to do something about it by switching over to Verizon. We might see more about this in the future, especially if this is a they they move contracts and they're in mid-contract. There might be a lawsuit that comes out of it. And if it does, we'll let you know over here on GeekSmack. All right, let's move over. And that was over on Reuters.com, by the way. We're going to move over to TechCrunch.com. Let's check this out right here. Ustream is uh, landing on the iPad, so now you can, uh, if you are a Ustreamer, you now can use your iPad to stream out movies. I tried it on my iPhone once, and it was okay. Of course, I have the 3GS. I don't have the 4. Waiting for the iPhone 5. Maybe I'll switch over to Android. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But anyway, they have the, they launched the first iPad optimiz optimized application, so you can view live and recorded content streaming through the service. Um, no word from if you can actually use it to record, but I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. But it's it's actually pretty cool because if you're on a Wi-Fi connection, especially at home, and you don't want to be in front of your TV, you don't want to be in front of your computer. Now you can be in front of your iPad app, which is pretty cool. So check that out. It's over on TechCrunch.com. Congratulations to Apple App Store. It hits 10 billion downloads. Of course, Gail, what was her name, is Gail uh, Davis. Congratulations to Gail Davis because she was the 10 billionth I, or app uh, downloader, I guess you would call it. Now, what was interesting was apparently Apple called her and she said, yeah, I don't want any of that, and hung up the phone. And Apple goes, uh, what? And so they had to call her back and basically they said, you know, Gail, this is not a... Uh, this is not, a, you won, you won a $10,000 iPhone or iTunes gift card. And she goes, oh, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll take that. So congratulations to Gail Davis. Davis, of course, the 10 billionth application out there. So uh, I'm, it's, that's pretty cool. We're, we, we're seeing the applications. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the screen because a lot of things are happening for some reason. Anyway, congratulations to Gail Davis. <laughs> if you want to read more on that, you can you can go over to voices.washingtonpost.com on that article. <laughs> I'm going a little crazy right now. All right, going over to computerworld.com, Facebook is blocking the access to that hidden iPad app. If you had an iPad app, basically if you have an iPad and you decide, eh, I'm going to jailbreak this iPad, you found, hey, there was a Facebook application, and you could log into the Facebook application. Well, Facebook didn't want that, so they just said, no, we'll, we'll block it for now. The application's valid. It's still there. It's just that you can't use it. Which just really, I, I don't get it. Is, is there some real bug that's in there? Maybe some 
kind of vulnerability that they need to work out, some privacy policy. I don't know. But uh, Facebook doesn't want you to use the uh, iPad app, which I think is is pretty sad. There must be a really, really good reason for them not to use the iPad app, especially now since Google Plus is really taking a taking a hit out of their market. I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. I would guess in the next week or two that Facebook and now in English, that Facebook app will actually be opened up and you'll be able to use it. So sit tight. Don't unlock your iPad. You're just asking for trouble. And if you do, hey, it's up to you. So. Anyway, check it out over on ComputerWorld.com. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, how many of you love the Angry Birds? Like I said, Angry Birds is now on the Roku 2, and I, I'll let you know. Once I get my Roku 2, I will let you know how it is, and we'll do some videos. We'll do an Unbox Me video on that. But anyway, Angry Birds has a small little other problem. There's apparently this patent inside of Angry Birds um, that's uh, run by a company called Loadsys, and, and Loadsys, L-O-D-S-Y-S. And basically what it is is a patent to let you pay for new levels. So let's say you get up to level 100 in Angry Birds and they create 50 new levels and you got to buy it for $4.99. That service is actually this company called Loadsys. Well, apparently... I am not sure if Angry Birds has decided, didn't pay that uh, that patent or they didn't know about that patent or whatnot. So now Loadsys has decided, hey, we're going to uh, we're going to sue you because you, you're you're infringing on our patent. And I don't blame them in one bit. They might as well get some get some money off of that application there. So if it's a, if that's the case, then I would guess that uh, Angry Birds is going to have to pay up and. And they probably go, okay, well, let's just uh, let's just pull out our change purses here, and not worry about it. So we'll see. We'll keep you apprised on that if there's any problems. I don't think there's going to be a problem. They're going to go, oh, okay, well, you know, that's that's what it is. We're going to have to do it. We'll do it. So if you want to read more on that, go over to telegraph telegraph.co.uk. But as my tongue today, my tongue has anyway. <laughs> Got a couple more articles here for you. Let's start over. Uh, let's go over. To, uh, start. You know, we've already started, right? We're going over to eWeek.com. Google Plus, of course, they've had that big issue about real name policy, where you have to use your real name instead of uh, a pseudonym or anything like that. Most of us should have been already familiar with that or used to that with Facebook, because Facebook had that same policy. But apparently, as everybody's up in arms, it's like. Yeah, but I use my pseudonym in this, and, and uh, I, I really like this pseudonym, and I want it to be my name. Well, unless you've changed your name to Trout Fishing in America legally, or something like that, then you can't use it. Um, when I started with Google+, I actually used, basically, whenever I sign into anything, my name goes Geekazine-Jeffrey Powers. So it's got my name, it's just got my pseudonym to begin with. Now, I talked to one of the Google representatives, and he said, yeah, yeah, that's really borderline, and you could get banned from this. And I really didn't want to get banned from Google Plus just yet. So I decided, okay, well, we'll take off the Geekazine off the name, and once that changes, we'll put Geekazine back on. Because I like the idea that people say, hey, it's Geekazine, because my Twitter handle is Geekazine and Jeffrey Powers, and I want you to, to associate the two, Geekazine, Jeffrey Powers. That's me. Now, it, it, once people start knowing me as Jeffrey Powers, then I don't have a problem with that, and I'll do the separation. Of course, if you go to Geekazine's uh, Google Plus profile, you'll see uh, our Jeffrey Powers' Google Plus profile. I'm not, not talking to myself in the first person anymore. You'll actually see Jeffrey Powers, and then under, underneath that, in the tagline, Geekazine. So, whatever their reasons for that, I it's it's their reasons, and who am I to argue with it? I'm using their service. So I can be Jeffrey Powers as much as I can be Geekazine. Mashable, that, that's all these other big companies, that's where they're all fighting the names. But I think it's more the fact that they want to keep personal profiles separate from business profiles. And I think I, I, think I understand how, how and why they're doing that. And that's when business profiles start coming on. So if you sign up to uh, Google Plus down the road, you won't be able to sign up on the personal pages with your business. You'll have to actually sign up on a business page. I think that's where they're going with that, but only time will tell. eWeek.com if you want to read more on that. All right, finally, in PCWorld.com, 
Last week, of course, OS X line came out, and, and we also got to see new MacBook Airs and the Mac Mini, which came with an i5 and an i, or, or not and, but or an i7 processor. Now, the one thing that they did do is they removed the optical drive, so you could actually put in a second hard drive. And a lot of people kind of, well, some people balked about it. But the reality is you could always plug in a USB DVD drive or, or a, even a Blu-ray drive. I suppose that wouldn't work too much on the D, on the USB. Of course, everything's still tied to all the Thunderbolt ports, so that's 10 gigabits down and up. So I suppose you could get a Blu-ray drive, hook it into your Mac Mini, and have an optical drive. But I'm going to tell you something. Besides Netflix, when I get my DVDs, I don't use my drive at all. In fact, I'm pretty much done with it. I'd rather I'd rather them have taken that out for my MacBook Pro and put in two, three, and four different or more USB ports. Maybe another FireWire port. Maybe uh, maybe another I don't know another type of port. That would have been cool. So I don't know. It's it's pretty cool. I I I I like the idea that the Mac Mini doesn't have the optical drive. I can put in another hard drive. I can do whatever I want. And I could actually hook up an optical drive via a USB port and still have that optical optical drive. So, what well, is this going to change your idea of buying a Mac Mini? Let me know. Twitter me at Geekazine or Geekazine at gmail.com. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, that does bring us to the end of part one. We're going to get you some ads on the way, and then we're going to get you right into part two. But first, we're going to get you into the cloud for this week. Just put something into the cloud. Alright, so we're having a nice day here. It's actually a beautiful day. There's less humidity, so I'm kind of out here walking and enjoying life and feeling good here. Here comes my cloud. There it is. Oh, hey, it's the Angry Birds Roku picture I created for one of my posts here. Let's put that into the cloud. Here we go. Right into the cloud. There we go. We're in the cloud. Yay. Just something into the cloud. Of course, this episode is brought to you by GoToAssist. Go over to GoToAssist.com forward slash podcast for a 30-day free trial. And I'll tell you something. First of all, I'd like to thank to thank Citrix for coming back here because they're always welcome back here because it's such a great product. Citrix and GoToAssist Express, it's a great way to connect up to people. It's a great way to find new clients and not have to drive to them. So you don't even need to be in the same town, the same state, the same country. All they do is call you up and say, hey, I've got a problem. And you say, okay, well, get online. Let's uh, let's figure it all out. They put in a nine-digit number in a website, and then you connect up to their machine. You can control their machine. They can control your machine if need be. So you can, this is a great training tool as well as it is a support tool. And you can support up to eight people at once. So if you've got somebody that's uh, that needs a service pack upgrade on the first one, and the second person needs some training, the third person is installing some software, can all do it at the same time. They won't know the difference. Go to Assist Express is a great program, and you got to try it. Giving you a special free offer if you go over to go to assist.com forward slash podcast. Go to assist.com forward slash podcast. You'll get a 30 day free trial to support Smarter with Go to Assist Express. Have you ever thought about how much of your life is on your computer? You lost it all. When your files are backed up with Carbonite, you'll be able to get them back with just a few clicks. Of course, we're also brought to you by Carbonite.com. Thanks to Carbonite, who's the brand new sponsor over here. You can back up your files and make sure that everything is safe. You know, there's only always about 15,000 drives per day that die. 15,000 a day that pass away. And I've got several hard drives right down here in the Geek Bar. I got two of them running right here and I've got four of them sitting over there. And all my data is on there and it's all important data. And if it was to disappear via fire, via theft, via hard, via hard drive failure, I'd be pretty much out of luck. That's where Carbonite comes in. Carbonite backs it up to the cloud, secure servers, backup encryption, and you can even pull it up onto your mobile to see what type of pictures and documents you have up on Carbonite.com. $59 a year, about 16 cents a day. Of course, if you use that code TPN, that's going to get you a great savings as well. So sign up for free over at Carbonite.com. 
Remember that offer code TPN. All right, welcome back to the second half of Geekazine Geek Smack, and that is, of course, the Geek Smack. Geek Smack. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back to Geek Smack side of things where we talk a little geek news here. So let's get into it. We're starting over at ESPN. Of course, if you are a uh, football geek or a fantasy football geek, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll love this because the NFL lockout is now over. They are ready to, uh, they're ready to announce that football is back. And of course, Twitter has been all a twit on that, and, and which is pretty good. Not only are they talking about uh, Washington with expletives I can't really talk about on Twitter, but they're also talking about the NFL players uh, lockout. Uh, like, for instance, this first tweet from Reggie Bush, 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 I don't know. Is that how you pronounce it? Reggie Bush, he's basically saying, I know you guys are happy that football is back. Sure am I, America's number one sport. I totally agree. I can't wait. Football is coming up in less than a month and I'm really excited. They say that everything should be good to go and there shouldn't be any problems and uh, that there won't be any type of delays or anything like that, at, at least for now. So they're getting into training camps, everybody's ready. Of course, the world champion, Green Bay Packers, gotta mention them, they, talk, they were talking on the news last night and they said, hey, you know, we've been, we've been practicing this whole time during the lockout, we are ready to go and go for another winning season. So can't wait to see what happens there. What's your favorite football team? Are you a Packer fan or are you not a Packer fan? Let me know. Tweet me at Geekazine or Geekazine at gmail.com. ESPN.com if you want to read about that article. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, check this out. If you were at Comic-Con, you got to see this. A lot of great celebrities, a lot of great women, and there's 250 pictures. This is over on the CelebBuzz.com. And take a look. We'll, uh, we'll expand over to the other side there really quick. There we go. Well, that's not going to be helpful. But anyway, there's 250 pictures of all the ladies of Comic-Con that uh, were there, uh, and including Alyssa Milano, including Felicia Day, including uh, Maggie Q from Nikita. Uh, the list is right here. Nikki Reed from the Twilight Saga. Uh, Minka Kelly from Charlie's Angels. Uh, so on and so forth. Charlize Theron and Kate Beckinsale and Lake Bell and Lucy Lawless. Uh, I love Lucy Lawless. Uh, she, her role in Spartacus is just been amazing. And not because she gets naked during the show, but because she's moved so far past her Xena warrior princess. In fact, I'm wondering how many people would refer to as, her as Xena as opposed to uh, the Spartacus character. Um, I don't know. Uh, but if you want to check out all these pictures, a lot of great pictures uh, from Comic-Con. I wish I could go. I, I'm definitely going to be going next year and getting a lot of great interviews. Speaking of which, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you for a second about this. If you go over to Kickstarter.com, I'm going to pull this up really quick. Kickstarter.com, I have... Let's see... Uh, it's not coming up right away. You go over to kickstarter.com, you can check out my project over on Kickstarter. And that's basically the Geekazine feed, the Geekazine uh, special media feed. We're asking that you help become a backer of the Geekazine special media feed so I can go out to places like Comic-Con, South by Southwest, so on and so forth. And uh, here's, the, here's the picture right here. And, of course, I've got one backer right now, so thanks a lot to the, to the first backer. Pledge $25. You can pledge $5 or more. And, of course, you, with, with these pledges, you get things like credits onto, sh onto the videos. I'll be giving you a gift pack of some cool stuff, including Geekazine stickers and a whole lot more. So please check it out. Go over to Kickstarter. Of course, I'll have it in the show notes there so you can uh, go from there. So anyway, that's over on Kickstarter.com. All right, you camera geeks, check this out. This is a guy by the name of Keel Johnson. And, of course, you go over to keeljohnson.com, you'll find this. He basically took cardboard, and he made, he made lots of stuff. But we're on the pages of the cameras. Digital cameras, Polaroid cameras, uh, SLRs, everything like that. You'll, you'll, you'll go, we're going down the list right now. You'll see some of the pictures there. 
Pretty cool stuff. His name is Keel Johnson. If you haven't checked that out, I saw this over on Google Plus. It's like, ooh, me likey. That's a geek thing. I don't think the cameras work, but it wouldn't it be cool if they did. You could have a cardboard SLR. Of course, you couldn't use it in the rain and snow, but that'd be a great talking piece right there. So, keeljohnson.com directly to his website. Check it out in the show notes. Speaking of some cool stuff, check out this out. It's for you, all you health professionals, health nuts out there. It's an infographic. It's called the Doctor's Tech Toolbox. And basically what they're saying is that they're, the U.S. hospitals are trying to get more into the tech age, as in the tablets and the smartphones and stuff like that. So you can, you can, uh, you can diagnose a lot better. In fact, they, they go through this infographic, and this is over on businessinsider.com, saying that 79% of physicians prefer iPad, 12% would go for a Windows-based tablet, and 9% would like a, an Android model. 75% of physicians in the United States purchased an Apple mobile device, such as iPad, iPhone, or iPod. It's a great infographic. You can check it out. And, of course, these infographics are, seem to be pop popping up a lot more than, uh, than in past. So pretty cool stuff. You can check that out over at businessinsider.com if you want to see more. One thing you have to that doctors uh, might want to understand, and, of course, they understand it better than I do, I worked for a medical facility as an IT administrator. I signed all the HIPAA rules and regulations back then. Of course, they've changed. But the big thing is you buy a mobile device like that, it could be problematic. As, as long as there's no data that gets stored onto the tablet, onto the smartphone. Uh, like, you know, I went to the doctor last week cause, or two weeks ago because I don't know if some of you know this, but I was diagnosed with a kidney stone. And I'm kind of waiting for that to finish, we'll just say. And uh, if the doctor actually had my medical data on his iPad without collecting it through a Wi-Fi, through a system like uh, Epic system, which deals with a, a more structured, secure medical system, then my, my x-rays could be seen by other people. So that's, that's the one thing you have to worry about is all the HIPAA laws, if they're going to allow these types of devices, which I'm assuming they will. And there shouldn't be any problem. But, you know, you, you just have to watch out. Make sure that everything is okay and it's all sanctioned, so on and so forth. And then you can go from there. So, But if you want to see this infographic, like I said, businessinsider.com. It's a great little read. Another great read is if you are hungry for pancakes, then try these. The Star Wars Pancake Molds. You can make yourself a Yoda. You can make yourself a Darth Vader. You can make yourself a TIE Fighter. You can make yourself an X-Wing or a... Millennium Falcon, or anything like that. This is over on LaughingSquid.com, so check it out. Um, I think there's a price on this. Let's see if we can go here. They pulled it from Geek Alerts. Uh, they did not put down the price of these molds, but I'm assuming it's not going to be too much, maybe $20 or $30 for the uh, different types of molds. And you can check it out if you want to get more information. Go over to LaughingSquid.com. Let's go over to Gear Live, favorite uh, Andrew Edwards, friend of ours. He's talking about the Casio Bluetooth 4G Shock. And we, we talked, to, we found these uh, at CES. These are watches that connect via Bluetooth with your smartphone. And the idea is if your phone rings, instead of your pocket vibrating and people going, oh, wait, instead your wrist will vibrate. And it'll actually say, hey, you've got, you've got a text message. You've got a call coming in. So you could look at your watch and see a text message instead of pulling out your smartphone and seeing that. So it's a little bit more non-invasive if you're in a meeting or a, a date or something like that. It's like all of a sudden you get a buzz. Oh, hey, you know, I got a text message. Cool. I don't know about responding back through the watch. I'm assuming you got to pull out the smartphone and, and do that that way, but... If you are on a date, ladies and gentlemen, I would probably suggest not to get too many text messages. Maybe even turn your phone off during a date. That would probably be a good thing, unless you can't. But uh, it, it's kind of cool. You won't have to pick up the phone. You just say, oh, I got a call from Fred. I can ignore that. Push a button. It's ignored. And go from there. GearLive.com if you want to re read more about it. All you drummer geeks out there, check this out. This is... Uh, my, one of my favorite drummers, one of my favorite drummers, is Neil Peart. It's pronounced Peart as far as I know. 
And he's basically saying, it's a nice little interview over on LA Times. He talks about how he really works at working out. Now, as a drummer myself, I know that being in a healthy state is very important. You know, I've, I'll, I'll tell you something. I've been playing some gigs lately and I feel a little bit tired because I haven't been doing the proper exercises, haven't been doing the proper workouts and stretchings and stuff like that. But I know, of course, also don't get to the level that Neil Peart does in, in playing the drums. So I've only got a four piece set. He's got a whatever, 50 piece set or whatever. He does do some cross country skiing, some swimming, some cycling, and a lot of yoga. I should get into yoga. That's not a bad idea. I, I've never thought that I would get into yoga, but it seems to be a, a good good roundabout way to limber up. So if you're a drummer, a drummer geek, check that out over at LA Times. Going from drummer geeks to balloon geeks, and a little word of caution, I don't think that this is not safe for work stuff, but you make the judgment here. Anyway, there's a balloon sculptures. It's called Aragami. And of course we have Venus in the middle there and that's that's where that came from a little bit. It's art, so that's why it's safe, I feel. But anyway, you know, I used to I came from a family. My dad is a professional clown. Yes, that is correct. My dad is a professional clown. And I actually did a little bit of balloon sculptures as I was growing up. Not to this level, so <laughs> this is kind of this is kind of interesting. You see the Campbell's can right here. Um, and so much more. Uh, I could do I could do a lot with balloons, but I don't know if I'd spend that much time to do a uh, a Mona Lisa just like that. So <laughs> if you want to read, uh, check this out. Go over to LaughingSquid.com. LaughingSquid.com. Are you a balloon geek? Let me know over at Geekazine or Geekazine at gmail.com. If you like the origami, or if you have any questions on any of the posts, go over to Geekazine. And comment there, Twitter me on Geekazine or Geekazine at gmail.com. All right, let's move over to device.com. They got some great iPhone cases. If you're looking for a new iPhone case for your iPhone 4, they've, uh, they're have they showing you 50 cases for the iPhone 4 and probably for the iPhone 5 as well. It doesn't really look like Han Solo too much. kind of looks like a, a Borg with clothing on maybe a maybe a uh, zombie or something like that encased in carbonite but they have some other great iphone cases over there so if you want to check it out go over to device.com last part of the geek smack and then we'll get you into oh no no that's not that was the last part of the geek smack and of course we're going to be talking about this in a second here <laughs> of course if you go over to the audio version of geekazine you can check that out over at stitcher if you go over to stitcher.com forward slash geek, put in your email address and download the mobile application for your iPhone, for your Android, for your BlackBerry, for your web OS, then you could win yourself $100. We draw every month. So go over there and download that mobile application. It's a great application. I use it all the time for listening to my podcasts on the go. So go over to uh, stitcher.com forward slash geek and you can win yourself $100. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's talk about the last part of Geek Smack and then get you on your merry way. We're talking about Lion, and there is a very important vulnerability, and it goes a little something like this. If you have a Mac, an iMac, a MacBook Pro, a MacBook that has Snow Leopard or Lion on, even a Mac Mini that has a FireWire port, then you can be, there. there's a vulnerability right there. Now, in order for this vulnerability to work, you have to download a certain program. The name of the program is called Passware Kit Forensics version 11. What happens is that Forensics Kit, hooked up into the FireWire drive, it, you can plug into a FireWire port, it pulls the memory from your MacBook which can hold passwords in a non-encrypted way. So you could actually get the login to your, to your MacBook, which could also be the login to your iTunes account. It could get your login to your a Gmail account. It could get the login to uh, several other different programs that run through there. Now, the good thing is it's not an over-the-air thing. You actually, somebody actually has to physically plug into your machine. 
But even if you, whoops, even if you close the lid and walk away, let's say you close the lid and walk away, get a, uh, a refilling coffee or something like that, you're in a coffee shop. Somebody could easily plug into the firewire port. And since the firewire port is on Thunderbolt port, faster the, you know, can go up to 800 megabytes per second, they can pull that information very quick. Now, once again, you got to be in that situation where somebody's ready for that to happen and they plug in, they get your passwords and go, but it's still a vulnerability and it's still something you need to be very aware of. Now, a lot of the times I run Mac OS X, but a lot of the times I run Windows. I'm not sure. I don't think that it's affecting in the Windows side. I don't think you can pull stuff out of the Windows side. But I'm going to download this software and I'm going to try it out and I'm going to show you if, you know, once I get it to work. We'll show you on a future video how it does work because it's very scary. Especially if you're in a coffee shop and there's lots of people and somebody that's just sitting there waiting for somebody to walk away. They plug into your FireWire port, a couple seconds later they have your passwords. We'll see what happens. It's, it's a very important thing, and they, they mentioned it. We got this article over on cultofmac.com. So go over to cultofmac.com to read more about it. Of course, if you go to the show notes, you can, you can get all that information and go to that link. Subscribe to the show notes, by the way, because that helps me tell you where I am and what I'm doing. So, Hey, quick word of warning to some of you that uh, get the email of the show notes, the email is going to be changing in a little bit. So I'll tell you the new address. I think I'm going to be putting it into a Google Groups account so you can get the email show notes through Google Groups, which uh, will be a lot different. But I'm actually going to be shutting down that part of geekazine.com and doing some other mail stuff. You'll be able to sign up for my weekly email now over on geekazine.com, which is run through MailChimp servers. So uh, if you want to get a weekly rundown of what's going on at Geekazine, then, then feel free to sign in your email address over on the front page at geekazine.com. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, that does bring us to the end of Geek Smack. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, Twitter me at Geekazine, geekazine at gmail.com. And uh, we'll, we'll try and get that information from you for there. Of course, go over to the YouTube channel. You'll see the OS X Lion trackpad, how to use the trackpad features, which is pretty cool, the two fingers and the three fingers. And, of course, we're going to be doing a lot more tutorials since there was great response on that. So thanks a lot to everybody that responded. For Geek Smack, my name is Jeffrey Powers. And until next week, you guys take care and uh, be safe. And we'll see you next week. On, well, we'll see you Thursday for the five tech things you should know about. Remember, that's another show over on Geekazine. And, of course, the daily day in tech history. Every single day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, there's always a podcast there. So get that there. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.